Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a video in a new series. And I'm just going to call this Historical Mysteries. Essentially throughout this series, we are going to look into some unsolved historical mysteries. And we're gonna see if we can suss out what really happened. And uh, now historians before us have tried and failed on all counts in most of these mysteries and most of the mysteries that I have on my list, but I have faith in us. I really think that we're gonna come to a good conclusion, if not a definitive one. But to start off this series, I thought that I could tie this in with my Renaissance series uh, by starting with one of my personal favorite historical mysteries, which is the death of Juan Borgia. Now, the Borgias themselves are really rather famous, uh, but I'm sure some of you are asking, who is Juan? Uh, because the most famous members of the Borgia family are Rodrigo, who was Pope Alexander VI, Lucrezia, and Cesare. They are the three most famous members. In fact, today I would say Lucrezia is actually probably the most famous member of the Borgia family. But Juan is a lesser known member of the Borgia family. He is brother to Lucrezia uh, and Cesare. And I think you can be forgiven for not really knowing who he is. Uh, so the Borgia family is headed by Rodrigo Borgia, or Pope Alexander VI. In 1492, he ascends to the papal throne uh, through a lot of really interesting and backhanded means that we don't really have time to get into today. But that in itself could make for a really interesting history chat, how Pope Alexander actually became the Pope. Upon becoming Pope, Pope Alexander immediately started placing his illegitimate children into really important positions. No, popes don't typically have children. There is that pesky thing about celibacy. Uh, popes, like the rest of the Roman Catholic clergy, are supposed to be celibate. In late medieval, early Renaissance Rome, this is a rule that wasn't always obeyed, uh, but nor was it really talked about. It wasn't really openly flaunted. The way that Alexander VI went about things was really shocking to people. It's actually one of the most interesting parts of the whole uh, Borgia story that he does in fact acknowledge these illegitimate children. And apparently there is very little pushback on him placing them in these really important positions of power within the church, within the papal army. Pope Alexander had four children uh, with a woman named Vanazza de Catanay. She, for the most part, was actually married to another man. Uh, but we do know these four children were Rodrigo Borgia's or Pope Alexander VI's. Juan is sometimes thought to have been the eldest child, uh, but his birth year is not actually known for sure. After his death, there was a mix-up in some documents where they wrote his date of birth uh, a couple of years off in different places. So some people will tell you they believe Juan is the eldest child. But if he's not the eldest, he's definitely the second born after Cesare. Uh, so Cesare is also potentially the eldest child of this match between Venozza and Pope Alexander VI. There is a third child who is the only daughter, Lucrezia. Uh, and then there is a fourth child who's also never really talked about named Joffrey. Two of these children are some of the most famous names in history, and I would say they actually outshine their father, Pope Alexander VI. Lucrezia, historically, has probably been the most popular member of the Borgia family uh, because for centuries she was viewed as maybe the worst of them. She was often talked about as a poisoner. It was often rumored that Lucrezia was responsible for the deaths of a couple of her husbands, uh, particularly by poison. She was said to have a poison ring, a ring that she wore that she could pop the stone out of and poison was held where the stone was. Uh, and so this would be a very easy way uh, to kind of put poison in somebody else's drink on their food, and it would be pretty much untraceable. Nowadays, she has a much more rehabilitated image, uh, and often now people will tell you that they believe Lucrezia was essentially innocent of the sins of her family, that she didn't even really know what was going on. She was a pawn. I personally think the truth is somewhere in the middle, uh, but alongside Lucrezia, you have Cesare, who is incredibly infamous, um, and Cesare was really famous at the time. Cesare is the subject of The Prince by Machiavelli, uh, and so he was often discussed and talked about as kind of a villain 
during the age in which he lived. Uh, so Cesare's reputation hasn't gotten any worse with age. It was actually pretty bad when he was living. The Borgias in general have really entered into pop culture, uh, specifically through the Showtime TV show. There was also a Netflix show, uh, but the Borgias are also the basis for the family and the Godfather. And once you know that, you can't really unsee it. Uh, so the Borgias have been in pop culture for a long time, but there's been a bit of a resurgence thanks to those recent series on Showtime and Netflix. And I think that's where Cesare has started to shine a little bit more than Lucrezia. So where does Juan fit into all of this? Uh, well, essentially when his father is made Pope, along with many other titles that he is given, uh, Juan is given the title Captain General of the Church, which essentially means that he is going to lead the papal army or the army of the papal states. Uh, in 1492, Italy as a country did not exist. There were many disparate kingdoms in the boot of Italy, uh, and the papal states were one of those, headed, of course, by the Pope. Uh, and so Juan was given a really, really important position early on in Pope Alexander's reign. And in the TV shows, this is often portrayed as a point of contention between Juan and Cesare. Uh, so Cesare was accorded a very high place within the church the same time that Juan was given Captain General of the church. Uh, so Juan was always going to be a soldier and Cesare was always on the path to be kind of the next Borgia Pope. Uh, in the television shows, this is always shown as a point of argument between the two of them because Cesare does not want to be in the church. He believes that he should be the military man. And this doesn't just go for the TV shows. This is often something that is portrayed in Borgia historical fiction as well, uh, that Cesare covets Juan's role. I would say this is largely true because it's been proven that Cesare did in fact really want a military career. And he did in fact actually get that military career after Juan's death. Keep that in mind. So let's set the scene. It is June 14th. 1497. Juan attends a dinner at his mother's house, Venozza de Catane, uh, and the other children are there, Lucrezia, Cesare, and Joffrey, who is the youngest. There's quite a bit of an age gap between Juan and Joffrey, uh, but Joffrey does have a wife named Sancha of Aragon. She's there. Venozza's husband is also there. All told, it was apparently a pretty normal evening, and Juan left dinner at around the same time that he normally would. Uh, at some point after leaving Venozza's villa, he was murdered and his body was thrown into the Tiber River. His horse returned in the morning riderless uh, and with one of the stirrups cut, which was a cue to everybody uh, that something bad must have happened to Juan. Juan is immediately reported missing when this happens. Uh, someone apparently witnessed a body being thrown into the Tiber River that night uh, by a group of around three or four men. And when asked why he didn't report this earlier, the guy basically said, this is such a common sight in Rome. I didn't think it was worth reporting. I see this all the time. And once they had that information, the river was essentially combed. That is how Juan's body was found. So Juan's throat was cut and he had apparently been stabbed something like nine times all across his torso. Uh, and this might not actually sound like that much of a mystery at this point uh, because our only witness says this happens all the time. People are mugged and killed and thrown into the river all the time. So why was this viewed with any kind of suspicion instead of just assuming this was a case of really bad luck, really bad timing. As the Pope's son, Juan is rich. Uh, Juan was always rumored to, to be extremely fashion forward. He was always talked about uh, as wearing the brightest colored doublets, these really bright colored tights. When you see what people actually wore during the Italian Renaissance, when you see sketches of what people actually wore in the Italian Renaissance, it is genuinely garish. Uh, and so they would wear like tights where one leg was green and one leg was yellow. I mean, picture Juan wearing something like this that basically says, hey, I've got a lot of money. I'm out after dark. I'm essentially alone. So here's where it gets interesting. His body is found with those bright clothes still on him, those rich clothes still on him. And more interestingly than that, 
his purse is still attached to his belt. So you would wear your coin purse attached to your belt if you were a man during this period. And often that would have been the goal of any kind of mugger, any kind of robbery, uh, would be to cut that purse off. So not only is the purse still attached to him, his money is still inside. It's something like 30 golden ducats, which is a lot of money. So automatically everyone knows this wasn't a typical robbery. And Pope Alexander apparently in some grief because Juan is rumored to be his favorite son, uh, he kind of launches a murder investigation. That investigation lasts for only about a week before he decides to drop it. So who are the suspects here? Who stands to gain something if Juan dies? So the first suspect we have to talk about is easily pop culture's pick for who did it, and that is Cesare, Juan's brother. Cesare does make sense for a lot of different reasons. Let's go back to the main one from earlier. Cesare was desperately jealous of Juan getting the commission to lead the papal army. He desperately wanted that military career. Juan was also just evidently a very vain, arrogant guy, and it chafed Cesare that Pope Alexander would ever want to saddle all of the family's hopes and dreams on an idiot like Juan. There is a wrench that can be thrown into this particular theory about Cesare wanting to get Juan out of the way over jealousy because he believed that he should be getting everything that Juan was getting. Um, Cesare was apparently in line to get a military job anyway. That was going to happen prior to Juan's death. So is that really a motive anymore? I don't know that it is. But there is another theory, there is another motive for Cesare, uh, and that is jealousy over Sancha of Aragon. They were both having an affair with Sancha of Aragon. And yes, I did say earlier that Sancha was Joffrey, their youngest brother's wife. Uh, and so maybe this is a good headway into our next suspect, who is Joffrey. Joffrey is much younger than Cesare and Juan. And Sancha, his wife, is far closer in age to his brothers than she is to Joffrey himself. Uh, but since Joffrey is so young, he kind of instantly falls in love with her. He instantly forms an attachment to her. And it's often thought that Sancha had an attachment to him, uh, but that at this point, it was not romantic at all, given their age difference. The night of Juan's murder, Joffrey is around 15. Uh, so still maybe a little young to have done it himself. Uh, but a lot of people think that Joffrey probably hired someone to get Juan out of the way once he discovered that Juan was having an affair with his wife. The next suspect is Lucrezia. And okay, this might be the craziest one of all. The Netflix Borgia show, which is actually my favorite, I prefer the Netflix Borgia show uh, for casting reasons over the one from Showtime uh, because I really, really love uh, the guy they got for Cesare. But in the Netflix Borgia show, they portray Lucrezia as basically being the one to kill Juan. Uh, so she is actually aided by a lover of hers who really delivers the blow, but she is the mastermind behind his death. And that was the first I had ever heard of Lucrezia being a suspect for this case at all. As I stated a bit earlier, Lucrezia over the centuries has gone through quite a few rehabilitations of character. For many, many centuries, she was viewed very poorly. She was thought of as a monster, uh, that she was definitely thought of as a murderer, as a poisoner. And so maybe this idea was birthed out of that kind of earlier form of thought. But nowadays, Lucrezia is often thought of as very innocent, very pure, almost as if she doesn't know what the rest of the Borgias are up to. And again, I think I said this earlier, I personally think the truth is somewhere in the middle there and I think it does her discredit to think that she's on either end of those extremes but I definitely don't believe she had anything to do with Juan's death at all. But she has been a suspect in the past so I thought I would include her. Last but not least in our list of suspects is the Orsini family. And if you were at all familiar with late medieval early Renaissance Rome, the Orsini family that's a name that she would be pretty familiar with. Uh, they are a very, very old family. They claim heritage from the Roman period. They claim that they were heirs to emperors, essentially. Uh, and so they have been a big part of Rome's history, particularly in the medieval period. They, like many others in Rome, balked 
when Rodrigo became Pope Alexander VI. Uh, and this happened for a wide variety of reasons. Um, one of them, though, is that the Borgia family is actually Spanish. And because they are Spanish, they are actually a bit like new blood, new money. Uh, and to an ancient family like the Orsini, that's lesser. Uh, so that's definitely a consideration on their part for hating the Borgia family and for hating Pope Alexander specifically. Uh, but they also just generally don't like the conniving backhanded way that the Borgias run things. Uh, they don't like Pope Alexander VI flaunting his mistress around. They don't like him appointing his illegitimate children into positions of power. At the actual time of Juan's murder, they were the most popular suspects. They were the ones that definitely the Borgia family suspected the most rather than anything internal. A lot of historians also favor the possibility of the Orsini uh, potentially hiring someone to do this, uh, to come and hurt Alexander VI by taking away his favorite son and potentially his son with the most political power at the time. So that is our list of suspects, and that is our murder. And I would love to know down below who you think did this. Uh, I have my theories. In a kind of romantic, poetic sense, I really want it to have been Cesare. Uh, Cesare is one of my favorite historical figures of all time. I think Cesare Borgia is potentially one of the most fascinating men who ever lived. He is, to me anyway. And I think I've always felt like the relationship between the two of them I could see that it would get to this point and I could see that Cesare would do this and that he probably wouldn't regret it. Uh, and so in some ways, I really love a family drama. And so I think Cesare stood to gain from this definitely, but I also think it's probably a little bit more boring than that. It probably was a hit by the Orsini. What makes me really think it's Cesare though is the nine stab wounds to the torso. Uh, so if you're gonna cut a man's throat, that really does it. That was the killing blow. Uh, but the stabbing, the stabbing nine times, that feels personal to me. That feels like something you would do if you were personally angry with someone, if you personally hated them. So I'll be curious to see what you guys think down below, but this was the murder of Juan Borgia. Uh, his is a little bit more tame compared to some of the other murders that I have on my list, but I would love to know down below if you have some favorite unsolved mysteries from history that you would like me to get into. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.